accomplishments in human history. Today you're announcing the team that can get it done. Dr. Slowey is arguably the world's most experienced and successful vaccine developer, responsible for some of the major recent breakthroughs in vaccines. General Perna oversees one of the world's largest logistics and supply chain operations, the one that keeps the Army running. Three highly accomplished career HHS scientists will oversee each area of Operation Warp Speed. Dr. Peter Marks of FDA for vaccines, Dr. Janet Woodcock of FDA for therapeutics, and Dr. Bruce Tromberg of NIH for diagnostics. This is truly a dream team. We started work on each of these areas in January, and Congress has provided nearly $10 billion explicitly for this kind of research and development effort. Operation Warp Speed will integrate existing efforts that are coordinating vaccine, therapeutic, and countermeasure development, including NIH's active and RADx initiatives. This week, HHS and DOD already announced new contracts to manufacture hundreds of millions of needle and needles and syringes here in America for distributing an eventual vaccine. Finally, the President's efforts will ensure not only that we get vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics faster, but that we get large donations of the eventual products so they're affordable for the American people. So thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to all of the American scientists and inventors at HHS, at DOD, and elsewhere who are hard at work already, and I really want to express my personal appreciation to Secretary Esper and the Department of Defense because this partnership is what's going to make this truly an historic endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership of this bold and historic initiative. The Department of Defense is very excited and committed to working closely with our partners at HHS, across the government, and in the private sector to accomplish the mission we have been given. Winning matters, and we will deliver by the end of this year a vaccine at scale to treat the American people and our partners abroad. You know, the Department of Defense has been in this fight since day one, going back to January. We stayed ahead of the curve every step of the way, and today, on America's streets across the nation, over 60,000 service members from all branches of the service are still out there, whether it's doctors and nurses in hospitals, whether it's National Guard on the streets of America, or the Corps of Engineers continue to build out capacity in America's hospitals. We are there and we will be there, Mr. President, and we look forward to this next greatest phase of this fight against the coronavirus. We are all in then, we are all in now, and we will be all in in the future, and we will deliver on time, bringing to full weight to bear the full weight of the Department of Defense, all of our first class, world class researchers and scientists, our ability to manage logistics at scale, and our great distributional capabilities. We will deliver, we will win this fight, and Mr. President, thank you again for all that you've done. You. We will get the job done. Thank you. I know you will. I know you will. Uh, any questions, please? Yeah, go ahead. We think we're going to have a vaccine in the pretty near future. And uh, if we do, we're going to really be a, a big step ahead. And if we don't, we're going to be like so many other cases where you had a problem come in. It'll go away at some point. It'll go away. Uh, it may flare up and it may not flare up. We'll have to see what happens. But if it does flare up, we're going to put out the fire. And we'll put it out uh, quickly and efficiently. We've learned a lot. Steve, do you have a question? We've heard that uh, the vaccine typically would take 12 to 18 months to develop. How can you do it in a speedier fashion? What makes you think this will work? Well, they started actually, I guess you heard in January, early January, and they've been working on it. I've, I know so many, and private companies have been working on it. The government's been working on it. Uh, so we've got the time because we put a, a very, and they've literally been working 24 hours a day. So we've got, uh, we've got the time, and we hope to be able to do something by the end of the year or shortly thereafter. But again, you know, it's not solely vaccine-based. Other things have never had a vaccine, and they go away. So I don't want people to think that this is all dependent on vaccine, but a vaccine would be a tremendous thing. And I will tell you, therapeutically or therapeutics, uh, what's going on there is uh, equally as impressive. We have some things happening. You know, we have the rendisivar, 
From Gilead, we have uh, other things that are very good. I think that uh, a lot is happen happening therapeutically. I can't say that it's, uh, relatively speaking, equal to what's going on with vaccines, but I think it's, uh, it's doing very well, very well. So therapeutics are a big factor. Yeah, please. Is there a global competition to develop this vaccine? Like, if France develops it first, will they share it with us? Yeah, if uh, and we have that very well worked out. Whoever gets it is going to be very proud to give it and and develop it. They've developed it, and we'll see what happens. Uh, we've got countries that are allies that are. We have some countries, frankly, that aren't allies where we're working very closely together. So we're working together with many different countries, and again, we have no ego. We have no ego. Whoever gets it, we think it's great. We're going to work with them. They're going to work with us. Likewise, if we get it, we're going to be working with them. So it's very important. It's a very good question, actually. Yeah, please. Mr. President, what do you say to those business owners and other people who are really questioning the guidance that the CDC put out last night? There was a concern that it would be overly prescriptive. Now there's a concern it's not prescriptive enough. What are business owners to do? Well, I thought the guidance was very good. I've heard very good reviews on the guidance. and. You know, the media will never be satisfied. If we gave you more description, that would be no good. If we gave you less, that would be no good. But I thought it was very good, and I've heard a lot of good things. Go ahead, please. Green. Do you have a problem or any concerns? Do you have any concerns about the Abbott tests, given some of the new numbers that have come out? No, Abbott's a great, uh, it's a great test. It's a very quick test. And uh, it can always be very rapidly double-checked. If you're testing positive or negative, it can always be double-checked. But it's a very good uh, test, very portable, very quick. Okay. And what happens if China is, is the country that develops the vaccine? What happens if it's China? Will the U.S. still have access to that vaccine? Uh, I would say the answer to that would be yes. I would say the answer would be yes. Yes, go ahead, please. Do you mean a fully approved, do you mean a fully approved vaccine for everyone? Excuse me, you're going to have to remove it. You can't hear through you. Do you mean a fully approved vaccine for the entire general public or a partially approved vaccine for emergency use? Mic. Yeah. Sorry, let me repeat that now I'm closer to the mic. Do you mean a fully approved vaccine for everyone, the full public, or a partially approved vaccine with emergency use? No, but we're looking for a full vaccine for everyone that wants to get it. Not everybody's going to want to get it. But we're looking at a full vaccine. Is that a correct statement? Yeah, we'll. So the answer is the answer is yes. We're working for a fully approved vaccine, but we'll also use the tools we have. For instance, emergency use authorization um, as as appropriate. We use all of our regulatory tools to bring vaccine available for the entire American population by January. Okay, and then, Mr. President, could you just clarify why are some of you wearing a mask and why are some of you not wearing a mask? We've all been tested. I've been tested. We've all been tested, and we're. Uh, quite a distance away and we're outdoor so uh, I told them I gave them the option they could wear it or not so you can blame it on me but I gave them the option we could wear it or not yeah please available to the rest would a US vaccine be available to the rest of the world at an affordable rate at a low cost uh, the last thing anybody's looking for is profit in terms of what we're doing every company they want to get it out we've had that we've had a great experience on Rendisivar, we've had a great experience on everything we've done. People are looking to come up with the answer. They're not looking in, you know, typically they're saying, oh, how much am I going to make? How much? They really have been. There's been a great spirit on this. They want to get to the bottom of it. And I think we'll be able to do that. Mr. President, uh, the Indian American community is appreciating your help in, in fighting the vaccine, coronavirus. What is your message to those 4 million Indian Americans here? So uh, India has been so great. and. Uh, as you know, your, your Prime Minister has been a very good friend of mine. I just got back a short while ago from India recently. And uh, we're working very much with India, too. And we have a tremendous Indian population in the United States. And uh, many of the people that you're talking about are working on the vaccine, too. Great scientists and researchers, yeah. We're working very closely also with India, correct. And say hello to your Prime Minister.